Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and this is your white 764 sewing machine. Uh, and this is the final test before we pack her up to ship out to you. And uh, we're going to go over the various controls. Um, you may already know how to operate this machine. Uh, but we're going to post the uh, video to YouTube, and we'll send you a link to uh, find it. And uh, it'll also benefit uh, other owners of this machine who uh, don't have the benefit of a user manual or a, or a grandma to teach them. Um, and we're going to start by winding a bobbin. So you'll find your you'll find your bobbin in the bobbin case below your slide plate, which doesn't slide in this case. Um, or you can just tip the machine back. If you have big hands like me, it's a little easier. Uh, but your bobbin case will be down here inside the uh, inside the hook. Springtime. Lift a little lever, and it'll hold the bobbin case, bobbin in the bobbin case while you pull it out. As long as you're holding the little lever up, the bobbin won't fall out. This is your bobbin winder over here. And um, to wind the bobbin, you put your thread on the spool pin, go under the handle, and through the upper thread guide here on the face of the machine, and then down to the bobbin tensioner down here on the bed, go under the spring loaded disc there. And then you're going to go up into your bobbin, which will be on here. But I find it's a little easier to wind the bobbin to get it started uh, before you put it on. So put your thread through one of the little holes, doesn't matter which one, from inside to out. And hold on to that little tail and give it several wraps to hold the thread in place while you're winding. Now when it goes on, you're going to want it to go on with the thread going over the top this way because your bobbin's going to spin this way and pull the thread up onto it. Slide it onto the bobbin winder and then turn the rubber wheel here until the little guide pin goes into the slot on the side of the bobbin. And that way your, uh, your bobbin will spin with the bobbin winder. Take up the slack. Then raise your bobbin winder so the rubber wheel contacts the hand wheel. And in the center of the hand wheel, there is a chrome knob, which is your clutch knob. Turn that chrome knob towards you about a quarter turn. You'll feel it hit the stop there. And then you'll be able to turn the hand wheel and uh, the rest of the machine doesn't cycle. The needle doesn't go up and down. Uh, so that your your hand wheel can spin the bobbin winder uh, without making the machine go. Uh, you, you can also um, you can also wind the bobbin while you're sewing if you choose to. Um, I know some seamstresses do that, but um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's another tensioner on the back. You can go in from from this thread spool back this way and up to your bobbin uh, and wind while you sew uh, your yeah anyway so plug her in and wind the bobbin this is your light switch here on the side Uh, now you give it a little gas and you don't have to go fast. Uh, in fact, you have more chance of things tangling if you go fast. So just go nice and smooth. And let it fill. We're not going to wind the whole bobbin because this is just a test. And chances are you're not going to be sewing something purple. So you're not going to want a full bobbin of purple thread. So lower your bobbin winder and retighten your clutch knob. Just good and snug. Don't force it or you'll have a hard time loosening it next time. Uh, 
Now your bobbin is going to go in the bobbin case with the thread coming off the top to the right this way. And that's important because of the way it goes into the little slot here in the side of the bobbin case. It's going to go into that little slot and under the leaf spring you're going to pull up until you feel the thread click into place there. And holding that little lever out so your bobbin doesn't fall out. Uh, you see that little finger at the top of your bobbin case? Uh, there's a cutout at the top of your hook that that fits into. Oh, make sure your needle is up out of the fabric before you try to, or up out of the needle hole before you try to put it in. So make sure it's in tight so it's not going to fall out while you're sewing. Uh, to thread the machine, you put your spool on the spool pin, go under the handle, through the upper hole of the thread guide, and then back through in the other direction, through the bottom hole. That adds a small measure of control. Okay, from the thread guide, you're going to go down between the discs of the tension assembly. And um, there are two sets of discs on this one because you have two spools, two spool pins. So you can use a double needle for decorative top stitching and there may be other purposes that I just don't know. Uh, but you can go through either set of tension discs. Between the discs, make sure it seats in snugly between them. Go all the way around and do not catch the uh, big thread guide yet. But at the top, you'll see there's a tension, a, uh, a little thin check spring. You want to catch that check spring. And when you have the check spring, when you pull down on the thread, you'll see the check spring move. Then you go under the big thread guide and up to the take-up lever, which you want to be in the up position so it's easier to reach. Through the take-up lever from right to left. Make sure that you're not tangled around anything. Down to the thread guide at the bottom of the face plate. Down to the thread guide on the needle clamp. and through the needle from front to back. And you're gonna, you'll benefit if you cut a fresh end on your thread because the little frayed edges uh, will bounce off the side to the needle's eye and divert your thread from going right straight through the hole. Your pressure foot's down out of the way and your needle is up. It makes it easier to reach. So just through the eye of the needle from the front to the back. Again, make sure you're not tangling around anything uh, because if you get a loop around here or around here, uh, it's going to uh, snag your thread and the machine's not going to work right. Now, while you hold the uh, end of your needle thread loosely, turn the hand wheel towards you one full turn and the needle will take the thread down, wrap it around the bobbin and, uh, well, the needle will take the thread down, the hook will pick up the thread from the back of the needle, wrap it around the bobbin, and bring up the lower thread. So when your needle comes all the way to the top again, it'll come up with a little loop of the lower thread. So you want to go between the toes of your presser foot and to the back of the machine. We're going to sew on some denim. Um, so I'll put it under the presser foot and using the lever on the back of the machine, drop your presser foot onto the fabric. Uh, 
we're going to straight stitch so you want to make sure that your stitch width lever down here at the bottom is in the zero position zero is straight stitch and uh, you don't really need that second keeper uh, we'll talk about those later and we're going to want a relatively short stitch length so let's go about one and a half on the stitch length dial here uh, this also is your reverse and uh, we'll look at that too uh, your stitch pattern selector is here and we want to be on the red M we want the red M to be at the top so making sure the needle is up out of the fabric I'm going to turn this way until the red M is at the top now we're in straight stitch mode this knob here is your feed drop which drops the teeth of the feed dog uh, so they don't move the fabric if you want to embroider or uh, uh, do applique or do some darning uh, you want to turn this knob all the way over to down uh, for sewing you want it on high over here uh, if you are going to sew a delicate fabric like um, silk or uh, something really fine and you don't want uh, the teeth to grab quite as aggressively you can turn the knob to low and then the teeth will come up just a little bit lower and they'll still move the fabric but they won't bite into the fabric as uh, aggressively as it does when it's on high but we'll go on high for regular sewing uh, so we're in M zero on the stitch width one and a half roughly for regular sewing uh, on the stitch length I mean little short stitches uh, if you turn it up towards uh, two three four or five the stitches get longer and longer and longer so holding your threads in the back for the first stitch or two you don't have to go fast you can but you don't have to then uh, if you're just going to pivot the fabric raise your presser foot leave the needle down in the fabric and use it for a, a pivot so a couple of stitches over start a new seam uh, and now we're going to turn the stitch length up a little bit oh heck let's turn it all the way up now you're going to see the fabric move faster because each stitch is going to be longer when you sew, um, don't push or pull on your fabric. Let the machine move the fabric. If you push or pull on your fabric, uh, you could flex your needle and make it miss the hole here and hit your uh, presser foot. And uh, your needle will shatter and go everywhere. And it could put the machine out of time, which isn't the end of the world, but it's, it means a trip to the sewing machine doctor okay a little longer stitch length guide your fabric don't push it or pull it you see taking big old bites now big old stitches um, I'm gonna shorten the stitch width stitch length again down to about one and a half and uh, we're going to do a zigzag uh, make it about two and a half and make the zigzag more obvious uh, stitch length is at two and a half stitch width we're going to move up uh, oops. raise your needle out of the fabric before you do that you don't want to bend the needle so you'll notice that if you move this zigzag lever over to a higher number it just goes right back so you have these little keepers little spring-loaded keepers you just press it in and slide it over and that keeps it from going back if you want to lock it in place there just slide the other one over too and now uh, we're doing a medium zigzag
okay with the uh, needle up end of the fabric we're going to go all the way up to five now you'll notice on this uh, zigzag scale uh, at, at about halfway up the scale the color changes from black to red and that's your warning that if you're using a double needle if you go any wider of a zigzag than that there's a chance of your second needle hitting the edge of the uh, presser foot, which would be bad. So if you're using a double needle, only go up halfway. Read the manual before you use a double needle. Um, so now we have a wider zigzag. Beautiful, well-balanced stitch, top and bottom, looks real nice and clean and even. Um, another thing that you can do if you want to have some fun, do something artistic, uh, make sure both of the keepers are uh, to their far apart position. And as you sew, you can alternate your zigzag width uh, to make a decorative stitch. Let's, uh, let's go over a little bit so you can see it right now we're on zero so we're doing a straight stitch but watch as we sew I'm alternating from zero up to about three I should have cut off that big seam on the end there I didn't uh, when you do that your your zigzag uh, changes patterns and you'll um, if you use a shorter uh, stitch length they'll be closer together and the pattern will be uh, more discernible let's see oh right reverse okay so we're on straight stitch again go to a shorter stitch uh, now we're going to reverse you just press in the reverse button and back you go you want to back tack and lock your uh, lock your seam you just push that button in easy peasy let's see what's next how about stitch pattern uh, M is straight stitch and zigzag. Uh, if you want to do a blind stitch, you're going to turn to, uh, turning this direction, you're going to turn to the blind stitch symbol, which kind of looks like a sideways camping tent. Uh, I should say a sideways vintage camping tent. Uh, now you're going to sew a straight seam, but every few stitches it's going to put a little zigzag stitch in there and uh, so we're going to need to let's see I don't think I need to change the stitch width for this let's see yes I do okay I'm going to move the stitch width all the way over to five okay. so, five or so straight stitches and then one zigzag stitch that's a blind stitch um, and now we're raising the needle <clears throat> we're going to turn the knob again to this stitch which has a name and I can't think of it and the manual doesn't tell the name of the stitch but it's a zigzag stitch with multiple stitches on each leg of the zigzag. So you'll see as, as we sew, that as we zig and zag, the uh, needle's going to make several stitches. See that? Excuse my shaky uh, 
folding table here. It's actually my camping table, but I needed a table in here in my uh, packing area. When you raise your presser foot, it automatically opens up the uh, tension discs so that you can pull your fabric out without bending the needle. And hopefully you can see these stitches that we've made. But uh, There's your straight stitch, your zigzag, wider zigzag, blind stitch, and whatever you call that other zigzag stitch. And you'll see the back is nice and even and smooth. Um, your, uh, before we get to tension, let's talk about this. Uh, if you're going to be doing, um, darning or, uh, embroidery or, um, uh, applique, uh, you're not going to want much or any pressure on your sewing foot. So you press down this little collar here and the button pops up then the pressure is released from the sewing foot and you can move your fabric around to wherever you want the needle to go. Uh, again, take it slow and easy so you don't bend your needle accidentally and make it miss the needle hole. Um, for regular sewing, you're going to want it about halfway down. You just push the button down and it locks itself in place until you press the collar again. So push it about halfway down and that's good for regular fabric, regular sewing. If you're sewing something really heavy, you might want to give it a little more, a little more pressure. Uh, if you're sewing something really light, you might want just a little bit of pressure. But for regular sewing, about halfway down is good. Um, that looks like we've covered. All of the controls except for the tension. Um, your upper tension is what pulls your stitches up. When the take-up lever comes up and pulls the thread snug, and a, the check spring takes up any slack. And, uh, as it pulls up, the tension on your thread is what governs um, how much uh, the bottom thread gets pulled up. So if, you're, if your fabric is puckering up, you might have a little too much tension. If you're getting loops on the bottom of your fabric, you don't have enough tension. Either the tension is not set right, or uh, you've got a little glob of something stuck between the discs, keeping them from closing and uh, putting drag on the thread. Uh, or your presser foot is up something. So uh, loops on the bottom of the fabric means... Uh, not enough upper tension pulling the thread up. Uh, loops on the top or just not a good snug seam would mean not enough tension on the bobbin. Uh, that's a whole different story and you're rarely if ever going to need to uh, change your bobbin tension. Um, if you start having problems down there, uh, check in the bobbin area for uh, you know stray thread balls of thread or a, a little piece of thread stuck under the uh, under that leaf spring or there's something holding the leaf spring back from uh, putting drag on the lower thread but the lower thread controls the top of the stitch upper tension controls the, the bottom of the stitch um, and usually for regular sewing I set it right around three somewhere. Uh, if you're sewing something, something heavy, you know, canvas or uh, duck or something like that, you might want a little more tension. If you're sewing uh, something really light and it's kind of pulling together a little bit, you might want to let off the tension just a little bit and, uh, you know, adjust it until your fabric looks right. That covers all of the controls. Um, oiling. You're going to want to oil your machine depending how much you use it. Uh, if you use it all day, every day, you're going to want to oil it every day. 
and not you know not a bunch of oil just like one drop at each oiling point anywhere where two parts pivot on each other or s slide on each other or um, you know somehow contact each other as they move uh, you're going to want a, a nice little film of oil for the parts to slide on so there's no friction um, if you so oh maybe a couple hours a week uh, you're probably going to want to uh, oil it once a month or so if you um, <clears throat> just bring it out on rare occasions to sew you know to uh, patch your pants or you know some little special thing and you haven't used your machine in three months oil it because the oil evaporates over time which is a lot of what I do is um, is take these machines apart and scrub that old oil off that's evaporated and uh, condensed down onto the parts because it like turns into like a sticky varnish on them and it keeps things from moving freely like they should and uh, so regular oiling uh, will melt that old oil and uh, and keep it fresh um, if you see lint building up in there you know brush it out and uh, vacuum it uh, and your your uh, user manual uh, will show you the different oiling points but if, if you understand that you're um, you're oiling all of the parts that move against each other it makes it all make sense so you want to open up the face plate, oil under there, brush it out if it's dirty. Uh, these two screws hold the top on, and you take them out. They're spring-loaded. There's a little spring right under the head. Don't lose the springs. Uh, take that off, and you'll see all the parts in there that move. If you turn the hand wheel, you can see what they do. Uh, oil in there. Uh, you're going to want to put a drop of oil in here where the uh, bobbin winder turns. I don't see an oil hole on this, which is not that common. You could put a drop right back here where the wheel meets the little housing it spins in. Uh, that way you don't get oil over here on your thread. Uh, then tip your machine back, and uh, you're going to want to oil all of the movement points under here, and you know, there will be oil holes. Again, your manual will show you. Um, this is your hook and bobbin. You can see how that finger of the bobbin case fits up into that little notch there. You can raise that lever, lift out the bobbin and the bobbin case, and fold back these two little spring-loaded keepers. And then we can pull the hook out along with its retainer, just like that. Now this is your hook. That's where the bobbin slides on. That's the point that goes around the back of the needle and picks up the thread and wraps it around. Um, and this thing rides in a in a groove right here and uh, you're going to want to make sure you get a, a drop or two of oil in that little groove or just put it on the back and the side of the uh, hook itself again not much you know maybe a drop on the bottom a drop on the top a drop on the outside edge uh, and then uh, the driver there the hook driver is kind of a half moon shaped thing and the hook fits right onto the ends of that just meets right up with the ends of it and sits down in that little groove on the same level as the driver okay i'm trying to do it one-handed let's see it when the hook is up against the driver it completes the circle you know it's all in there right it all sits down there nice and flush and then the keeper goes in with the notch for the finger of the bobbin case at the top and this little uh, guide pin here at the bottom there's a slot down here that that guide pin goes into and this sits down in there nice and neatly with the pin in the hole down there if if things are not going in like they should, make sure your needle's not sticking down in there and blocking it. So you put the keeper on, put these little spring-loaded 
keepers back on there to hold it hold the retainer in place and then again holding the lever on the bobbin case you put it in with the little finger pointing up and into that notch and make sure it's in snug I'm not going to fall out oh and uh, um, when you oil it you should take the uh, um, needle plate off actually the needle plate and slide plate which doesn't slide uh, will come off as a unit there's one screw back here and a guide pin take the screw out and lift it off uh, and these these two pieces are hinged together but you can pull them apart and it's a pain in the neck to push them back together so better if you just take it off as a unit lay it to the side and brush around the feed dogs brush out all the dust and lint that's in there you might have to take a toothpick or something and scrape it out uh, but make sure the uh, all of the dust and lint around the uh, feed dogs are cleaned out uh, it's a good idea even to use your vacuum and suck all that dust out uh, because when you oil it the oil can actually draw the dust down into the uh, moving parts um, yeah then put that back put the plate back on put the screw back in it's all pretty simple um, I think that about covers it uh, if you've come to this video from somewhere else on the internet and uh, uh, yeah if you come here from somewhere else uh, we are stagecoach road vintage sewing machine uh, and you'll find us at stagecoachroadsewing.com. We're on Stagecoach Road out here in the coast range of Oregon. Uh, we're on Stagecoach Road, so we are stagecoachroadsewing.com. And if you come to our site, you'll see literally hundreds and hundreds of beautiful old uh, machines that we've restored over the last uh, 20 some years. Uh, and. Uh, all different makes and models and just some really beautiful stylish old machines uh, this is a really good example of a stylish old machine uh, and at the top of the page there are usually 15 or so machines uh, also for sale uh, and see what uh, some of the beautiful machines that they've made over the years uh, this is this is one of the best it's a really nice one um, white sewing machine company i'm very impressed with the uh, vintage whites they're uh, good solid strong machines and this one is just so stylish so anyway uh, i ramble stagecoachroadsewing.com uh, we'll see you there bye bye